A class of local fourth graders was given a lesson in gender identity because one of their staff members over the holiday break decided that they were going to transition from identifying as a woman to identifying as a man. And these fourth graders are expected to change the way that they refer to the staff member. Let's talk about it in our segment. Unbelievable. <laughs> I can't muster a boop because this is that upsetting. So I can't make, I cannot do a, a boop today. Uh, this happened at Mar Vista Elementary in Normandy Park. It's the High Line School District. So to set this up, it is January 7th at 4 p.m. And parents are just getting ready to send their kids back to school from the holiday break. They get an email from Maggie Heater, who's the principal of Mar Vista Elementary. And it's the principal informing them, again, 4 p.m., the day before they're sending their kids back, that the next day is going to be an interesting day in their kids' fourth grade classroom. I'm going to read the full email to you. The subject line, equity lesson to support a staff member in Miss Snyder's classroom. Dear families of Miss Snyder's fourth grade classroom, there are many staff members that work throughout the day with your student, including in the classroom, on the playground, or in the cafeteria. One adult who the students know as Miss Angela wanted to share that they have begun the process of transitioning from Miss Angela to Mr. Angel and will be utilizing he, him pronouns. When we all return from break, students and staff will be asked to call him Mr. Angel. Upon our return, there will be a time in the day when Miss Snyder and Mr. Walker will co-teach a lesson about, the trans about his transition in accordance with the board policy in Highline Public Schools. They will be using the children's book titled, It Feels Good to Be Yourself, a book about gender identity by Teresa Thorne. This lesson will be age appropriate and focus on Angel's wish to be called a new pronoun and a new name. I am sharing this with you so that you will be aware and have the opportunity to discuss this with your child before we come back to school if you wish. Email me or call me with any concerns. So there's a couple issues here. You're not giving them time to decide how to discuss this with their child. We're talking about a fourth grader who the next day is going to come back to school and someone they knew as Miss Angela is going to be Mr. Angel. You're telling them at 4 p.m., acting like you're doing them a favor by giving them time to discuss this, which it's not optional. Your child will refer to this Miss Angela as Mr. Angel. Your child will be expected to do that. God forbid if your child doesn't. And now you as a parent have just hours before your kid goes to bed, if you even saw the email, to talk to them about the complex issue of gender identity and gender ideology. That's ridiculous. And we talk about transparency in schools. You might think that's transparency by sending an email at 4 p.m. the day before this is going to happen. That's not transparency, and that's not fair to parents. But sure enough, this happened the next day. The lesson was taught, and kids in this fourth grade class were told about Miss Angela versus Mr. Angel. And now they mentioned the book, It Feels Good to Be Yourself, a book about gender identity, which was going to be used to illustrate and teach fourth graders this important lesson. And remember, the principal said the lesson will be age appropriate. Well, I want you to ju judge whether this book is age appropriate. So there's um, a video. We have no indication this video was used in class, but there's just a video on YouTube of some person reading this book out loud. So we thought that would be a good way to share with you uh, what this book entails. Hello, everyone. My name is Nana Cece. Welcome to my story time. Today, we're going to read, It Feels Good to Be Yourself. I hope you enjoy it. Something tells me I'm not going to enjoy it. And Nana Cece is not the teacher in question or the staffer in question that's transitioning. It's a person who reads stuff like this on the internet. All right, Nana Cece, uh, keep reading the book for us. This is Ruthie's friend, Alex. Alex is both a boy and a girl. When Alex was born, everyone thought Alex was a girl. But Alex is both boy and girl. This is Alex's 
gender identity. So we're going to teach fourth graders that someone can be a boy and a girl. All right, one more passage. When you were born, you couldn't tell people who you were or how you felt. They looked at you and made a guess. Maybe they got it right. Maybe they got it wrong. What a baby's body looks like when they're born can be a clue to what the baby's gender will be, but not always. When people guess wrong, it's okay to let them know. Ruthie was five when she told her parents. I know you think I'm a boy, but really, I feel like a girl. Oops! Ruthie was a girl all along. That's unhinged. That, that's, that's not right. Oh, somebody looked at you, a doctor, and they made a guess about what your gender was when you were born. So in this lesson, to try to help these fourth graders navigate the fact that Mrs. Angel, Miss Angela is now Mr. Angel, you're then going to indoctrinate them into believing that the gender they were, were at birth was a guess. And that when they're as young as five years old, if they feel like a different gender, they should just come out, let their parents know, and the parents will be like, okay, cool. How old are fifth graders or fourth graders? What? Fourth graders, probably. Seven, eight? Yeah, maybe a little older. Maybe nine, ten. So I try to tread lightly on, how do I put this? I don't want to be demonetized on, on YouTube. And as much as I hate saying that, YouTube is super picky when it comes to this particular issue of gender identity and kids. And I try to never have it come across as a personal insult. I'm not attacking any individual person. But this book is not age appropriate. Using that book after giving parents a couple hours notice is not appropriate. And expecting that fourth graders with just a few hours notice are going to comply or must comply and be completely fine with, and parents have to be completely fine with them having to change entirely how they refer to a staff member that was Miss Angel, Miss Angela before break and Mr. Angel after break is completely inappropriate. It's indoctrination. It is so far above and beyond the role that schools should have in a kid's life. If my child was in that fourth grade classroom, they would not be attending that school district today. They would be out of school like that. How absolutely, Nicole, can you play that third, that third clip again of, and again, this video wasn't shown in class, but it's this book that this person in this video is reading from that was used to teach this lesson. When you were born, you couldn't tell people who you were or how you felt. They looked at you and made a guess. Maybe they got it right. Maybe they got it wrong. What a baby's body looks like when they're born can be a clue to what the baby's gender will be, but not always. When people guess wrong, it's okay to let them know. Ruthie was five when she told her parents. I know you think I'm a boy, but really, I feel like a girl. Oops, Ruthie was a girl all along. Gender is not, oops, it's not an accident, it's not something that's up for debate. Sure, if this adult teacher, and this is where I struggle with this, I don't care what adults do. I really do not care what adults do with their lives. You want to be Mr. Angel? Fine. But you cannot expect fourth grade kids to have to go along with it, especially if their parents aren't comfortable with it. And what's going to happen to kids, fourth graders, who inevitably forget or, or mess up or slip up and call Mr. Angel, Miss Angela, like they're used to? Are they going to get in trouble for it? Are they going to get an email home to parents? My child would be out of that freaking school so fast. And I know that there are a lot of uh, parents who are upset by this because We've been getting emails. I know our friend Jonathan Cho had, had done something on this. The Burian uh, local paper was doing something on it. So it's getting attention. But this is, you look at that lesson versus what the 
situation was, even if they wanted to tell students you have to refer to this woman as Mr. Angel, I, I do think that's bad in and of itself because you're asking fourth graders to comply and their parents to just be okay with it, even though scientifically it doesn't make a lot of sense or biologically. But then you're going to segue that into an indoctrination lesson where you then tell these fourth graders that this is okay because at the gender they were assigned at birth was a guess, was assigned. I hate that phrase. It was assigned at birth. No, that was just how they were born. So then you've indoctrinated them on the, the, the larger issue. And it's about more than just Miss Angela versus Mr. Angel. Wild. Again, Mara Vista Elementary, Normandy Park in the Highline School District. If it bothers you, speak out about it, especially if you have a child in that district, even if they are not in this particular fourth grade class. This stuff has to change. The only way it's going to change is if parents make their voice heard, pushback, vilification, labels be damned. Un-freaking-believable.